Okay, folks, um, I'm going to try to do a quick little video here to show how to use my new stained glass texture brushes that I created for Procreate. And uh, please bear with me. I've got my little dog here in the room. Hopefully she'll behave and not pester me while I'm trying to do this. Um, all right, so to get started, the first thing I do is I create an artboard that is about 12 inches wide by 5 inches high and that's what you're seeing right here the actual design that I'm going to be doing is nine and a half by four which is the size used for a 15 ounce mug wrap that way I can shrink it shrink it down for an 11 ounce wrap and use it for both of them so I have an outline image that I saved in my photos and I created this outline in illustrator and then I took it into Photoshop to create a silver solder look on it. In Photoshop, I have a style that I can click on that turns the black outline into like a silver looking outline. So you can create your own designs right inside of Procreate. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just find it easier to do them in Illustrator because that's what I'm used to and I'm still pretty new to Procreate, but I'm getting there. So um, I will also show you how to do the regular solder, but the one we're going to work with here in just a little bit has the silver solder on it. So um, I would normally go into the little wrench up here and make sure add is highlighted and then insert a photo, which I already have. Here, and this one is the black outline and before we do anything else I'm going to show you how to do that regular solder and what I do is I grab a white and I make sure I'm on the solder line brush and then I take and I just make sure it's on full opacity and then I Take it, I just draw, whoops, I'm sorry, my bad. Let me clear that. Okay, you have to create another new layer right above this. Let me delete this one I already did. So we're gonna get on the black outline. And if you wanna rename these, you click on it and up here at the top it says rename, click on that and then you can type out the name, which might help you keep things a little bit more organized all right so i created a new later letter layer above the black outline i'm going to click on that and over here i'm going to check clipping mask okay that's the layer i'm going to actually be working on so i'm going to go back to my brush and i've got white and i'm going to go right down the middle this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to use the smudge brush and we're going to smudge it all around so grab the smudge brush and you may have to play around with your settings over here as far as brush size and the strength of the opacity. But what I usually do, I see that's a little bit too big for this, for mine, this bigger. I usually take it, I drag just little lines of this white out. And if you have a different way to do this, you can do it however you want to. This is just how I do it. When I do this and I go back over it, it gives it some different colors in there, different shades. Makes it look a little bit more real. Okay, so now that I've got that drug out like that, I'm going to take this and I'm literally just going to go right over it. And you see how that's given that a Kind of a shiny look, a metal look. And I'm just taking that smudge tool and going back over it. Now, if I wanted some more shadow or something in here, I'm going to get outside the black line because anything you paint on this line or on this layer is not going to go outside of the black area because of that clipping mask. So I'm going to take and I'm going to smudge some back in to give a little bit of a shadow there. Now, you don't have to do this. This is up to you if you want to do this. 
because later on in the design as we go along, I'm going to show you how I do actual shadows for the whole thing. But, and let's say that you played around with this too much and you kind of lost your white look to it, the shiny look. I'm going to go back from the outside in, give it some more shadows. Maybe we got, let's say we got too much gray. See, I smudged it too much and now I got too much gray and it doesn't look right. I'm going to go right back up here and get some more white. Go right back down the middle. Now you can do, maybe if we even do a smaller line. And I'm just putting it right back in. See how easy that is? And then I try to, where these join, I try to leave a little bit of shadow there. So you can see kind of where they join. These don't have to be perfect because real solder is absolutely not perfect. It's actually even kind of rough. At least mine is. So you would do that on this entire design if you're going to do the solder by hand. Okay. Now the next thing I would do, <clears throat> and I've already created these layers, is the background. And I pretty much always use the modeled brush, but I go in and I choose a gray. And I go down here and I find my modeled stained glass and let's make sure we're on that right um, layer and you want to do this all in one continuous stroke so if you have to make your brush bigger make it bigger that's fine because what we're going to do is we're going to go erase out the parts we don't want it underneath this is going to be underneath everything so you don't want to lift your brush while you're doing this because I'll show you what happens if you lift the brush. Make sure you've got everything covered you want covered. Okay, so let me just show you off to the side here. If I were doing this in one continue and I lift the brush and I want to start again, look what happens. These brushes are so transparent that you'll see every stroke in them. So you want to do anytime you put a color down or anytime you do a background, you want to do it in one continuous stroke. So that means you have to have this whole piece on your screen where you can get to it all. If part of this is off the screen when you get over here, it's going to lift the pen whether you lift it or not. So this is, now I'm going to go to the eraser. And let's make that a little bit bigger. And what I do, well, how did I get off the eraser? What I do is I try to keep that eraser right underneath that black line. Whoops. Don't want to do that. Like that. Because I'm going to put a color in this frame around the outside edge. So I don't want this to show. And I'm going to show you the difference here in just a second all right let me just put I'm gonna go grab a color um, let's do this light purple and I'm going to do the water glass and here's the water glass with nothing behind it here's the water glass with the gray behind it well, actually, let me do it right here because that'll. Do you see the difference there? How it dulls it down. So that's why we don't want this gray under our colors. So I would go and I would delete all this. And I'm not going to do this entire thing, but I'll do this outside frame. All 
Okay. Then you're going to have to go back in, and you're going to have to delete it from here as well. Anywhere in your designs. And at least with the eraser, you can pick it up and change sizes and that type of thing. So it's a lot easier to erase than it would be to try to paint all these in perfectly. Like so. And you don't want to get outside these lines if you can help it. It does happen. And if it happens, I try to correct it right there. Sometimes I miss it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so like right there. So let's say I didn't catch that right now. I'm going to come back on that same layer with the smudge tool. Even if I see it later, I'll go back to that layer. And I'm going to take little tiny strokes all the way around and push it back in under that black. You don't want to do a big stroke like this because you'll see it. So I do the different tiny strokes that way because you've got different colors in there. So let's get this over here. Like I say, you're going to do that for the entire piece. That's your background. All right, let me go out here to the next one where I've already got the entire background blocked out of there. <clears throat> oh, I lied. Make it on the right layer first. All right, now I think I have everything. All right, so then we're gonna start, um, well, this one I don't have my layers named. We're going to start with the color and let's start with the center circle. And I keep all of my light colors on their own layer. So all these circles are gonna be the same color. So I'm gonna put it all on one layer and I'm gonna do it all at the same time. And the reason I do it all at the same time is because I usually can't remember what the exact color was if I go back to do one later or something like that. So I do them all at the same time, it's up to you, but I'm not very good at remembering what brush I used or what color I used. So I did all the circles. You can see. And let's go back in here. I did all of those in blue. I did, oopsie, I stopped there. I guess I just did the outside. So, and this is the one that has the silver solder, as you can see. So my solder is already all done for me. But the reason I do these on their own color like that is because if I decide I want to change the color, it's very easy to do that. So I don't really like these dark blue designs I have out here. I don't really like that color with this. And I'm going to go find that. That's that layer right there. And I'm going to go up here under the wand and I'm going to go under hue, saturation, and brightness and click layer. And down here at the very bottom of the screen, you can see you get some different choices here, saturation, saturation, brightness, and hue. And I'm going to start with changing the hue and see if I can find something I like. And 99% of the time, I don't end up with the same colors I started with, very rarely. And I also like to do this kind of desaturated look because that's what stained glass looks like. So for an overall design, I kind of like that better than the bright blue that I had, but you could make these any color. So let's say that I didn't like um, these big petals here. 
Again, under the magic wand, hue and saturation, and layer. And I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit. Now, if I darken them, I don't like that because it kind of turns to black. Oh, I like the pink there. That's pretty. I think we'll leave it at that. But now here's the thing. Like I told you before, when you do these colors, each one should go on its own layer. Each, you know, if it's pink, put all the pink on one layer. If it's teal, put all the teal on one layer, etc. Because here's the problem. Now, I've played around with these colors. And if I go back over here and try to make um, this... set of leaves over here let me get on the right one the same it's not going to happen and the reason it's not going to happen I'll never get it matched even if I had the exact color and the exact brush I used because I've already applied um, some filters to that So I'm not ever going to get the right color. I might come close, but it won't be right. Let's see if this is... And on these brushes, I made a lot of these really big so they could be used in bigger projects. And if the texture is too big and you do not like it, I'll show you how you can go correct that in just a second here. And all I'm doing now is erasing where I went outside the lines. So that's actually pretty close. That's probably the closest I've ever gotten <laughs> when I was doing this after I've already played with the colors. So, all right, so let's go take a look at this real quick on your brushes. Um, I'm just going to put this, yeah, we'll put that there. Okay, that's your texture, and you see it can go pretty big. If I go into the brush, and I click on grain, and I go to scale. Now, you don't want to scale these way down, because you'll start getting lines in there, but you can bring it down some. And it will actually make your texture smaller, more refined. If that makes sense. And if you don't like it smaller and you want to put it back, go under about this brush and you want to reset the brush. That's going to put it back to the way that it was when you purchased it. And I play with mine all the time. I go up and down. It just depends on what I'm working on. So. You're not going to hurt it as long as you keep that original reset on there. You should be fine. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go out to the next one. This is one that is probably about three-fourths completed. Again, I use the silver solder on here. And I pretty much have my colors the way that I want them. I have my background in there. Let's just go through the layers real quick. And uh, let's turn off some layers. Okay, so we have um, the silver solder layer. We've got the background. Let me get this down here where you can... It's not gonna let me see it. I have the outer frame done. There's the bigger petals, smaller ones, the centers, um, those little designs. There's those. Again, I really don't like, I have a problem with those. <laughs> All right, now on this one, I actually have some of the shadows done. I want you to watch this area right here really closely. When I turn on 
the shadows. Do you see the difference that makes with them without the shadows? It just, to me, it really makes it pop. You know, it gives it so much more definition. That's why I was saying don't be too concerned on your solder if you are going to go back and put shadows because it's just, it's a lot easier to do the shadows. But see the difference there? And it's, it's just a difference in personal taste. I prefer the shadows. So when I do the shadows, I use black. Again, I use the solder brush. And what I do is I go and make sure I'm on my shadows layer. Yep. And that's not big enough. Let me make that a hair bigger. I'm kind of going part way under that solder layer. Whoops. eraser and get rid of a little bit of that just so I don't have to mess with it. So once I put that on there with the black paintbrush I'm going to take my um, smudge tool again and I'm going to go around and I'm going to soften this and kind of smudge some of that back under if I think there's too much. And again this doesn't have to be perfect. It shouldn't be perfect. If it's too perfect it's going to look fake. So that's how I do the shadows right there. Let's do another one. And your corners, I think, are kind of important because corners on stained glass where pieces of meat, or like right down here where I'm working right now, that's kind of smudgy, dirty looking on real stained glass because it collects dirt and dust in there. And when I do these shadows, I do it, <clears throat> excuse me, on the inside and the outside. So, might take you a little while but like I say I just I think it makes a huge difference in the end product gives it some pop and it's just it's up to you it's everybody's individual taste but you can do some of these and like I say Turn it on, turn it off, and see the difference in it. I prefer it. So, but that's up to you. So, anyway, well, that's how I do the stained glass brushes. Like I said, each color has its own layer. You don't want one color on top of the other as far as overlapping. Because these brushes are so transparent, you're, you're going to be able to see those lines if you do that. So... But yeah, there's quite a few different brushes here, and it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, I try to mix in some different textures in mine, and some brushes work better with certain colors, and some brushes work better in bigger areas or smaller areas. You just have to kind of play around with it. Um, I'm going to show you real quick on the dual brushes, because those are... They're a little bit different to use. I'm going to do the 12 by 5 artboard. I'm going to, um, again, insert a photo. And I'll just go ahead and insert the black one of this. All right, so let's say that I want to do a dual color for this. And Let's see what the dual color water glass does. You need to pick two colors up here. So I'm going to do purple and on this one, let's do pink. All right, so this is, <clears throat> excuse me, 
the color changes by pressure. So if you barely touch it, it's going to be the one color. If you push down, the harder you push down, the darker the other color will come in. You want to do these in one stroke. Not continuous strokes, literally one stroke. Because these are different than the others. Um, they're even a little bit harder. It takes a little bit to play around with and get used to it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I start here and I'm pushing down now, I'm pushing down, pushing down. Okay, you'll see that. Now, if I come back, there's no way I can get that same pressure to equal out. So you see the stroke lines in here, and it starts to be a mess. You don't want that. So let's just say that I want... Um, let's say I want the circle and the first four petals in the center to be these colors. And I'm going to go through here. I'll make sure my brush is big enough. All right. Let's get on that layer there. Let's do this again. Now let's do this. So I would... erase anything outside of these petals. Little dogs actually behaving. I'm shocked. Okay. Oh, darn it. And I'm not very good at picking up my brush. You should be picking up your brush quite frequently when you erase because like what you just saw there if you have to undo something and you haven't picked it up for a while you're gonna undo a whole bunch so that's something I'm trying to get a little bit better at doing these I'm just gonna clear this layer but I wanted you to see how those work with the two colors so and I mean it can be any two colors it doesn't matter so that's how those work Go back here. Oh. This is the one I'm going to actually print off 
and uh, put up for sale in my shop as a mug wrap. So that's it. They're pretty easy to use. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you soon.